All right, welcome in to the 2021 marching band step off meet for Eastview High School. Um, excited to have you guys joining us and feeling like we're in a much uh, different position than when we did this live stream one year ago uh, talking about uh, what the marching band season might look like. So we are very excited uh, about the prospects and kind of our agenda tonight is to talk about what is this marching band thing, a schedule of events, some expectations, our home show, which is um, a, a festival that we put on for the greater Minnesota marching band community and uh, some parent volunteer opportunities. And then at the end, we'll reveal what the, the uh, show theme will be from uh, for next year. So welcome into the Brain Trust. Here we are at the Eastview High School Band office. I'm alongside Mr. Bergren and Mr. Harloff. We're all here trying to figure out how we can um, do this and serve you guys best. So thanks. Without further ado, let's let's begin. So marching band um, is a great choice for your student because it's positively life changing, and um, I feel very confident that a, a decision to do marching band is going to be a positive one for your student. And even though the climate is a little uh, you know, uh, challenging, I think it is a, uh, a very proactive choice to say um, with all that's going on, even though there might be some uh, fear of the unknown that I'm gonna take this risk. Um, and I think the worst thing that could happen is your, your student will make a lot of friends and they're gonna get a lot better at their instrument. So. It's, it's a wonderful choice. It's the biggest collective social group in the school, and we pride ourselves on trying to be the most welcoming group of students, um, especially to those new members. Uh, so it's, gonna, uh, it's also going to help you uh, in your present. If you're making a transition from eighth grade to ninth grade, that's going to be made so much easier by this. And um, it's also a great decision for your future. It's something that... Um, exists in memories and experiences and um, you uh, it's hard to replace those when you look back with a 10-year lens about your high school uh, experience so in that way I think uh, you're going to be very fortunate to have this experience and this operates as this program operates as a larger part of the Eastview band program we're going to talk a little bit about that but basically what it is is it's a um, summer and fall experience where we get together um, outside of the school day, as well as inside the school. So it's a co-curricular. It's both an out-of-school and in-school activity. For the most part, it starts in the middle of July and goes to August, or sorry, October 9th. There are some groups such as the Drumline and the Color Guard that will meet additionally to make sure they're ready to go. But that's a kind of a brief overview of uh, how the program functions, and we'll get into greater detail about what that looks like. Um, one of the big things is trying to get um, new families connected with what we're doing, and there's several different avenues that we do that. One of the main ones for uh, us to let you know about tonight is called Cut Time, and um, what Cut Time does is it uh, allows us to create volunteer uh, opportunities and communicate with families, and actually Mr. Bergen is going to talk about that in a little bit. And all you need to do to get ready for that is make sure your student is registered through the school for marching band. And then we will take that information and pull uh, you into cut time and kind of get you connected. Another big thing I would love if you do it, even if you do it right now, is to subscribe to our newsletter. And if this is really easy to do if you go on to our website. Our website is www.eastviewbands.com and that's linked in the subscription below. You can click on, click on that, that. You could do that too, but you can click on that and go to the bottom of any of the website pages and it will ask you if you want to subscribe to the newsletter. Then when we do blasts and shout outs and things like that, they'll go right into your inbox. So that's something that we want every single uh, band family to be um, to be doing, to get subscribed to that newsletter. And that one of those will be actually sent out in preparation for our upcoming event this week called the Mini Camp. And we'll get into what that is as well. We also have a Twitter that you can follow um, at EVMB underscore and um, a Facebook page. So we'll get into more of the, those things as we go too. So the big thing moving forward now is the mini camp. This is our chance to get the band together again once before we end school and we don't get together until the middle of July. 
it's also an opportunity for people to try it. Um, if they're still on the fence, I don't know if I want to do it or not. I just want to get a taste, see what it tastes like. You can do that. And we don't need to know your commitment until after the mini camp. And those dates are this Friday and Saturday, Friday, June 4th and Saturday, June 5th. And the times are on the website for when that is, but it's 3.30 PM to 6.30 PM on Friday, the 4th. Okay, so after school is done, they'll come here, we'll meet in the band area, we'll um, do some activities together. And then the very next day we come back and we follow that up with a nine to noon. And then at noon, we'll have a pizza party here at school um, uh, on us um, and students can come mix all that kind of stuff. And then at 1 p.m., we'll do a show and tell. What have you been working on uh, during this mini camp? for all the uh, parents and guardians out on our practice uh, field, which is the, the bus corral, the West parking lot here at Eastview High School. So that's the mini camp. After that's done, as a group, we go dark until, um, I think it's July 15th, the middle of July. And then we ramp up for the year and we'll get more into what that looks like uh, in a second too. So there are basically three groups in the marching band. There are the wind players, we call them the horn line, anyone that blows wind into an instrument to make sound, flute through tuba. We also have a percussion section that we call the drum line, okay? And that's any, any percussion instrument, that's the second group. And the third group is called the color guard. This group adds color to the show and also uses implements such as flags and rifles. And um, some of the, the stuff you might see might say drum line meets here, color guard meets there. And so trying to figure out what group your child is part of will help determine that schedule. And for incoming parents, there's a, there's a weird marching band lexicon that uh, you kind of get used to after a while, but can be confusing. And we're here to help in any way. Speaking of which, if you have any questions, um, email them. You can email them right now. Uh, to the two email addresses in the linked description below. Mr. Harloff and Mr. Bergen are here to sort of triage any questions that might be coming up that we can help answer, uh, especially at the end, okay? So um, what we can do now is if you're able to, you can go onto the website and click on the calendar and kind of go through And I'm just gonna show you what it looks like month to month. So um, starting with the month of uh, July, we uh, start on the 12th of July with something called Rookie Camp. And a rookie is someone who's a new member to the marching band. We want to help them with that process of what's it like to march? How do I hold my instrument in marching band? All that sort of stuff. And we just help them with a leadership team called the service team. Those two groups come together. They get to know each other. and just trying to get everything um, off on the right foot, pun intended. So then at the 15th, the 15th of the July on the schedule, it says full MB, full marching band rehearsal. Every member has to be there. Our typical schedule, if you're thinking about what does this really look like, it's three nights a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, from five to nine. And um, there are no weekend commitments until we get into our fall competition um, series. And so if you like to head up to a cabin or you want your weekends free to travel, blah, 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 we don't have any weekend commitments, which is a really nice uh, offering in the program. Plus what I like to tell kids is it's only three nights a week, five to nine during that nice groove spot. Once 9 p.m. hits for a lot of kids, their day is just ramping up. They've got five or six hours of video games left before they go to bed. So there's opportunities to socialize, video game, all that stuff. They can still very much have a summer, but they're going to get connected with peers. And as I like, like to say, they're going to get connected with people that they want to be around or, and that you want them to be around. This, this quote about being the average of the five people you spend the most time with. We feel like in marching band, they're going to be spending time with good quality people that you're going to feel good about that uh, social interaction time. So that's July, then we go to August, and August starts band camp. Band camp is sort of like the hardest thing you're ever going to love sort of experience. And we started this whole 
conquest thinking we were going to do good, better, best. What does it look like if the pandemic is look, looking like this? What's it look like if this happens? And we're feeling very confident at this point that we're going to be able to offer a regular or normal marching band season. So a lot of this information will be new to both the freshmen and sophomore parents and students, as well as it's been a while for some of the upperclassmen. So how we do it is Monday, we're going to hold camp right here. And that just means we're going to have practice uh, during the day, all day on um, Monday, August 2nd. And then we are planning and Gustavus um, is the place that we travel to for band camp going there on the 3rd, 4th, and 5th, and they're hosting their first um, camp this weekend. So they're already ramping up this, and they're um, observing all um, the uh, protocols, and they'll have additional protocols um, throughout the summer um, just to make sure that we're compliant in every way. That's a two-night, three-day event, and it is the highlight for almost every marching band student and then we come back on Friday to finish camp. On your schedule, it says Mr. P Cancer Walk. And what this is, it's going to be the first annual event um, where you can, um, it's virtual, so you can do this at any point in time. Um, you can walk it, you can run it, but we're going to just try to um, come alongside the Pascarella family. And you, th there's no obligation, but if students want to participate and show their support in that way, um, we're just carving out time. Okay, so then we're into August, and um, since, if you're looking at the week of August 9th, since we have some students that will be gone for this vacation or that unavoidable thing that we didn't plan around or I didn't know this, um, we have, we're doing something called Drill Week. It's just an opportunity to catch people up if they have to miss or this, that, and the other thing, and it's a focus on the actual drill positions, which is the marchers, I need to be here in this many counts. Then I shuffle over here, then I backward step here. And that's gonna be, um, I think, a really enjoyable thing. We have a band pool party. We're planning on the um, to do that on Friday 13th, the 13th. Um, and that's gonna be out at the, just uh, the Apple Valley Water Park. And uh, we'll have more details when that comes, but we want to uh, work hard together and we wanna play hard together and that's part of it. And you can look through there and you're going to see um, through August, we're meeting three three times a week. But we do have a few cool events, including the State Fair. We're going to be at opening day of the State Fair. That's going to be a huge thing for us. We're going to be there with Rosemount and Eden Prairie, the other two um, large marching bands in the state. And uh, having free time in the fair with your friends is a lot of fun. And we also perform at the Freshman Orientation, which is a nice event. If you look to September, this is um, when our competition season begins. When school starts, there are only 10 rehearsals where your student has to manage school and marching band or fall sport, school and marching band. We rehearse in the evenings for that reason and we shorten the time from 5.30 to 8.30, 5.30 to 8.30. And our season is extra short this year. It's five weekends, which will be incredibly memorable um, to perform at, it's a great chance for them to see, oh, what's this band look like? How do I do that? And get critique from judges and experience actually performing, something that we've sort of missed out on in the last couple of years. The first weekend is our home show. We'll talk more about that. Then we'll travel to Wasika. We've got a Rosemount afternoon show. We're going to Sioux Falls again for the first time since 2017 when we were grand champions there. And then we're finishing our season at Youth and Music, the uh, state championship, um, which is held at U.S. Bank Stadium, which is a, a real treat and um, a real honor for the kids to play at. Then things sort of calm down and you're only about a month into the school year. So for those balancing a lot of honors or AP classes, it's very doable, very possible um, for you to do uh, a great job with, with um, all those responsibilities. So that's the schedule, and that's maybe um, uh, one of the bigger items for new people, like what does that actually look like? If you have any additional questions about that, let us know. But for us to put on the kind of state-of-the-art show that we do put on, this amount of time is required. However, they're going to get a lot out of that, whether it's depth of friendship, depth of relationships, depth of learning, musicianship, all that sort of stuff. Once it gets to the school year, you're also going to be enrolled in either the wind 
class, which is third hour, or the percussion guard class, which is sixth hour. I can help you with that. I should be in that class, but I'm in this one. And we can easily switch that up and know that that's what happens quarter one. And then for all the other students, they're enrolled in bands quarter two, three, and four as well. So that's what that looks like. Um, I wanted to do a quick congratulations as we're beginning to select leadership to our 2021 drum majors. So this is a quick shout out to Lauren Mitchell, Felix Nettermeyer, Carmen Pascarella, and Lydia Whip. These are four amazing people. I can't wait for everyone to get to know and get to work with as well. Other stuff that comes up often is band swag or band merch. And we have a lot of options that come um, middle of the summer and we'll open up an online store for you guys to make purchases about um, swag. Um, and if you have suggestions for swag, let me know. And if you wanna help and be a parent liaison, please contact me and we're very open to that. The next thing that we need to talk about is the um, forms and the fees. And um, for that, since we are looking for a normal season, the fee is going to be $555. And that's going to be broken up into three equal payments of $185. And the payments will be due June 15th, July 15th, and August 15th. And to talk more about fees, what that looks like, and the home show, here's Mr. Bergren. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for being here. We're so excited to welcome uh, our new students into the building at Eastview High School. And we're so excited to welcome new parents into the community that is a really special place and you're gonna have a great time with our program. Because the, the marching band is a co-curricular program, there are a number of expenses that we incur as a program and that uh, that's, the reason that we have these fees. Things like a custom musical arrangement, a custom visual arrangement, additional instruction staff, a night, uh, the two nights at camp and, and uh, the, the food that we'll supply there. Those things are included in these fees. There are not additional charges for band camp. Um, uh, the only thing, and in addition to the $555, will maybe be a pair of shoes for new marchers. Uh, we do wear uniform shoes. Those shoes will be about $50 and we'll collect fees for those uh, in August. But to pay your fees, uh, we use at ESU High School, My Payments Plus, and we've got a little instruction sheet that's attached uh, to, or, or to, the, to the video. What you will do is navigate online to mypaymentsplus.com. If you've already used this before for other activities, you'll have an account and you can log in. Or if you're new to Eastview, you can create account very simply and then proceed. Under, Unfortunately, I was informed today that the search bar on My Payments Plus does not work, but you can navigate to our fees by going to the activities and fine arts menu, selecting high school fine arts, clicking on 2021 marching band fees, EVHS, and then following the prompts to, to complete your payment. It should work smoothly for you. I really hope it does. If there are any problems, you can contact me at richard.bergren at apps at, or sorry, at apps.district196.org. Students who are new to the district may be delayed in creating an account until July 1st. Um, if this is the case, you can contact me again and we can arrange an alternate alternate payment plan just for that first payment, but everybody should be on the list by July 1st. I wanted to talk with you a little bit tonight, uh, in addition to the fees, talk about uh, a really exciting event that we host at Eastview High School, and that is our competition. Like Mr. Gullickson said, this is actually a competitive event, and it's a highly competitive event. Schools from across the country and across the state of Minnesota uh, work really hard to create very intricate shows that highlight different marching techniques, uh, high musical skill, and even engage in some storytelling. And at Eastview, we think we're one of the best uh, in the region at doing this, and we're really excited to share this with our community and with you. As part of the series of competitions, these are, that are, are all hosted by local high schools. They're not sponsored by um, the, the high school league. Band programs across the state put these on. We pride ourselves on having one of the best attended and most well-run festivals in the circuit. 
Uh, we host our festival every year on the first Saturday after Labor Day. This year, it's September 11th. The festival invites other bands from across the state. We have 13 uh, bands from Minnesota and one from South Dakota currently registered, and we may have more. The event starts at 5 p.m. and it usually wraps up around 10 p.m. And it involves marching bands performing on our stadium, which is going to be new turf this fall, which is awesome. And their performances are judged by marching band professionals. These bands and the spectators together will be well over 4,000 people that visit our, our campus. Um, we may have 1,300 performers alone. So you can imagine what a great event this is. Um, because of this, the event, uh, any event of this magnitude takes a lot of planning and coordination. Luckily, Eastview Marching Man has the benefit of a parent-led festival committee that organizes all aspects of the Marching Man Festival and keeps everything running very smoothly. And that makes a fun and enjoyable day, not just for our students, but also for all the, uh, the visiting musicians who have, have been enjoying our festival for years. This year, we're lucky to have Bridget and David Holman take over the reins as festival chairs. Thank you so much, Bridget, Bridget and David. They'll be working with the rest of the festival committee to ensure the continued success of our event. Typically, each committee has two leads and someone with more experience on that team and, and usually a, a new person or a, a parent of a younger student. That helps to ensure that we have some continuity and overlap as we go through the, the, the festival years. Last year, of course, in 2020, uh, due to COVID-19, our festival was canceled. So that caused some disruption to our organization, but the festival committee hopes that we'll quickly overcome that. And I have every confidence in our great team. Uh, this is where you come in, parents. As at a, an event such as this requires an extraordinary number of volunteers throughout the day, to keep everything running and organized. And each festival subcommittee manages a different element of the event. Festival subcommittees include, uh, there's a, and there's a list that is um, attached to the email. Hang on, I gotta get my notes. Here's a list of the festival subcommittees. We have a, a concession stand subcommittee that sets up and sells concessions during the day, a security team that controls the gate for entrance of the bands and for spectators into the um, stadium. We have a traffic and parking committee, a ticket committee, a judges booth committee that helps clean the press box, assist the judges throughout the competition, and they get great seats uh, for the whole day. There's a volunteer check-in committee that helps us stay organized. Band hosts that uh, are band parents that are assigned to each performing ensemble. We help them move around campus and stay on schedule going from warm-ups to their performance venues. And there's also a committee that uh, helps set up a wonderful judges critique dinner. This, this uh, is a late night dinner for all participating band staff and directors. And that takes place after the competition while the judges are uh, waiting for, or the directors are waiting for the judges critique session. There's also a first aid station that we need to have staffed. And if you have medical experience, um, that's required to serve on that committee, but it's very helpful. And then finally, we have a committee that works on supplying lunch for our band students that day. They assist in order, ordering, organizing, and serving our band. That, uh, and that makes that day very special. We look forward to that as a big event. Um, it's always been super successful at Eastview High School. It's a big fundraiser for our program, the number one fundraiser for the program throughout the year. And we feel good about that fundraiser because it's what we do best. We perform, we share our talents, and we create a really wonderful performance opportunity, not just for Eastview students, but for band students all across the region. It's very, very uh, special, and we're happy to, to return to it this year. Because of the number of volunteers that are needed, each family should supply two adults uh, to work a shift on that festival day. Once you've signed up for marching band, and Mr. Harloff will go through that process with you, and Mr. Gulkson will as well. Um, once you're signed up, an electronic notice will be mailed to you through cut time, and uh, then you'll have an opportunity through cut time to sign up and to, to, uh, for one of those committees or to work a shift. So if you see an email from cut time, coming uh, at you this June, 
uh, please respond as quickly as you can. Because our festival is September 11th, we don't have time to start. We, it's too late to start planning once the school year begins. We really want to be uh, ready to go at least two or three weeks in advance with knowing who, where our teams are and for, for you to know what to do. It makes it an easy volunteer day. And I think you're really gonna enjoy work with, the, with not only our students, but kids from all across uh, our region to see the inner workings of marching band. It's really fascinating and really, really fun. If you've never seen a competitive marching band before, I, I tell you, you're in for a big treat. It's gonna be great. You're gonna enjoy the creativity that we see on the field. And it, if you've only seen marching bands at uh, you know parades and uh, football games, it's quite something unique to have everybody in the, the stadium really, really quiet waiting for the next moment. And it's a great venue for our kids to perform. This will be the 20th year of the Marching Band Festival at Eastview, and we really hope to make this year's festival a success. Uh, and it always happens because of extraordinary teamwork from our Eastview band families. Mr. Harloff is gonna join next, and he's got some information for you. All right, good evening, everybody. And now for the show reveal. No, just kidding. <laughs> Not yet. We're all, we're almost there. We're almost there. Um, I I have three things. Um, number one, um, Hornline. This weekend we have that little performance um, on Saturday afternoon, and um, we're going to be outside. So if you guys could um, bring three ring binders to put your music in, that would be great. So your music isn't flying all over the parking lot. That was sort of a side note thing. Um, the two big items that I want to talk about. Um, are the Google Forms below in the comments, okay? The first Google, Google Form that um, we, need you, we need the students to fill out is the commitment form. We used to do it paper, now we're gonna do it electronically. As um, most of you know, our designers, our um, music arrangers, our drill writers, our uh, dance choreographers, when they create our show, when they design our show, it is specifically for East View Marching Band students. They know our strengths, they know our numbers, so it's very it's very important, excuse me, to uh, have the students give us a, a commitment, okay? We're doing this, it's gonna happen. Because our drill writer, he's been asking for numbers for like four months now. Well, we wanna give him the numbers. And if we have 18 clarinets, he's gonna write for exactly 18 clarinets. He's not gonna round up to 20 or round down to 15. So students, please fill out that commitment below as soon as possible. Tonight would be great. The other um, Google form is um, an excuse absent form. It's really important when, when we're um, planning our rehearsals, we, we are very specific. Okay, we have to do this here. We have to teach the choreography to the flutes. We have to teach this to the drum line. And if we know who's going to be gone and who's not going to be gone, it's going to drastically help our, our rehearsal process. We'd like the students to, um, obviously, if there are emergencies, that those things come up. But if you know you're going to be absent for a specific rehearsal, we want to know at least a week in advance so we can, uh, we can plan for that. So those are two forms. The commitment form, please fill out AS. SAP tonight would be great. And then that absent form will be on the website for you to uh, to use throughout the season. Mr. Gullickson. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> all right, very good. Thanks guys for, for all that. And um, I was just thinking about a, a couple of things. One is that um, there are a few opportunities to volunteer that go beyond just the festival. And one of them is led by um, alumnus all-star Justin Quilling, and that's the trailer crew. And he's been working on stuff nonstop, even now to help make sure that we have um, the best storage and the best um, trailers that, um, that you're going to find. And so if, if you're looking for other avenues to help, um, let us know and we can get you connected with Justin and he helps with the front ensemble and that equipment and, and pit and, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. So as involved as you want to get, um, we will um, we will uh, definitely take all those talents of yours. Okay, and um, as we're wrapping up, any last questions, things that we've missed, please email um, Mr. Harloff or Mr. Berggren. Um, otherwise, um, we'll try to uh, catch those after the fact. But we're coming to the end of this meeting. 
And um, that means we're going to talk a little bit about the 2021 show. And we have um, sort of circled back on uh, trying to figure out exactly what's going to fit this year uh, as best as possible. And um, we've talked more about this show than I think any show that we've done in the past, just making sure it is the perfect fit for um, this group. And so um, we're really excited about it. One of the new things is um, Steve Collins is um, our, um, helping to design the program and writing the drill. And um, he's almost neurotic about making sure it's going to work like this and let's get this going. And um, we have wonderful um, arrangers and, and um, musicians that are going to help make sure that the music goes off without a hitch. So um, I'm, I'm very excited and um, excited for you guys to, to start working on it, too. And the 2021 show is entitled Electrified. I'm going to repeat that. The 2021 show is entitled Electrified. Now, we didn't have the time or resources to come up with an amazing video reveal, and I haven't had time to work on my Melodica as much. So um, I've got a Spotify playlist in which um, it's basically going to have the uh, tunes that uh, are going to be arranged as a part of this show. And I'm going to make that public at the end of this, and you can just type in uh, EVMB 2021 electrified. And um, you can start to think about what that might look like. Um, how do you electrify music? How do you electrify a group of people on the field? And while I'm not going to go into um, a lot of details about what we're planning, we're planning a lot of different things. And I'll just sort of uh, uh, keep it a little simple for now and, and keep you guessing. But the music um, will elicit a lot of things. And one of them is just that electric sound. And it's basically um, a nod to sort of an 80s synthesized sound. So you're going to hear some stuff from Daft Punk, which is uh, in a uh, French house band. And you're going to hear some things that sound kind of like a Stranger Things uh, theme where they're trying to capture some of that retro. And then also we're going to try to take some other music, some older music, and electrify it. And um, and I think you're going to enjoy that. And um, if you have more questions about what that means, you can ask me tomorrow and I'll give you some vague answers. <laughs> so um, with that, a couple of things I want to leave you with. Um, connecting. Make sure that you are subscribed to the newsletter, which is at the bottom of every website page. Minicamp is the big thing coming up. It's Friday at 3.30 right here, and that goes until 6.30. And then the next day we come on June 5th and rehearse 9 to noon. We have a pizza party at noon and then a show and tell out in the parking lot at 1 o'clock. So we're excited to see you there. It's the first time the whole band's going to get to uh, get together, and I think, you know what, it's going to be electric. Guys, that's going to finish the stream for now. Wishing you the best, and we'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.